There's something uh, very important that uh, Jonathan and Dawit were able to share. And I think Dawit put it very well, where he said, currently he's championing the use of technology. He's championing the use of technology in our organizations. And so, um, dear, I want to welcome you to help us, you know, understand. So number one, you know, just to be able to appreciate the role uh, that technology and AI is playing in our communities. And so, um, Amdia, I really want to ask you, online applications and platforms are transforming the world. We can all bear witness to that. So how is it that NGOs can be able to leverage on these technologies to improve resource mobilization and project management? And in that, I just want to acknowledge mm -hmm. what you've been able to do to increase the visibility and to engage mm -hmm. online when it comes to girls and also when it comes to economy. Mm -hmm. So Amdia, welcome to answer this question. Okay, thank you so much, Sophina. And um, Dawit and Jonathan, thank you for the powerful insight. Um, I don't know, there's, my network is very unstable. I don't know if it has to do with Ghana. So I'd like to up the camera so I can, so there won't be any interference with my network, if that's fine, Sophina. Okay, great. So, um, yes, of course. AI has come to actually, technology, <laughs> I mean, of course, we can always just oppose it with AI. The world is actually undergoing a very, like a digital revolution and NGOs, of course, are no exception. I mean, th there was this saying by, um, as, is it Elon? That says, um, AI or technology will not take your job. The one that will take your job is the one using AI or technology. So it is very crucial for organizations, especially NGOs, to be able to also what, adopt some of these online applications and uh, platforms to streamline their operations and uh, enhance their communication and increase the impact of their work. And that is what, what we've been able to do as an organization. We lead, I lead two organizations, a non-profit and then um, a, a social enterprise, both are soci a social impact-driven organization with a common goal and vision. So without these digital uh, innovations and um, online applications, we wouldn't have been where we are today because we started as a grassroots organization with little knowledge. We were just um, community actors. We just believed in social work. It was online or digital transformation that made the, all the difference. So even be able to even connect with impact direct helping us scale our impact. So, of course, this is very essential and crucial, especially in resource-constrained environments like Africa, where um, we are, of course, financially constrained to be able to even afford some things. But online um, applications are very um, much available for us to be able to access a wider and global market as well. So. I'd like to start with um, how do we actually mobilize resources or funds through these online platforms? So number one, I'll say crowdfunding and donations. I mean, people are doing amazing these days uh, through crowdfunding and donations. We have online platforms like GoFundMe, Kickstarter, Global Giving. They have actually changed the landscape, the uh, funding landscape for NGOs you can actually reach a global audience, allowing individuals and corporations to actually contribute to your cause. There was this even recent one, that was how my organization actually got our first huge grant through online um, presence, use of these online um, applications. So um, recently, I would just like to go to, uh, to just a case study with um, um, Kamala Harris, when she just, because they upveil themselves for donation, this is a political um, um, organization, oh, but they upveil themselves to online as needing donations. And um, um, Melinda Gates actually donated a lot of money just last week, uh, last three days or so. I read it online, just because they upveil themselves for donations. So, as NGOs, as local organizations, when we make use of all these platforms, 
we can be able to attract a lot of funding. And then there was this ice bucket challenge that was going around, and it was able to actually raise over 115 million USD for their research through social media and crowd, uh, crowdfunding platforms, just to show how the potential for viral campaigns if we use online platforms. So my, next, my second point will be grant management platforms. So after securing the grants or even as an organization, you can make use of online um, uh, applications like um, Foundance. We have Foundance, we have Flax, we have Grant Station, which help NGOs identify even funding opportunities. Go ahead to even track their application processes and manage relationship with donors. Impact Direct is doing amazing, just like that. They, so all you need to be able to do is to regularly update and maintain online profiles on your grant database to increase the visibility to your potential funding. And then my next point would be membership and subscription model, which also um, NGOs can leverage on platforms like Patreon or creating a dedicated membership site to provide steady recurring income. An example can be an NGO can offer exclusive content, newsletters or something like that to be able to um, exchange for monthly contributions and then foster a community of engaged supporters. And then my next point, my next point would be enhancing project management. We can actually use this online uh, application to enhance our project management. We know this is very, very expensive how to um, actually manage your project. It's, it's a huge space project management, but there are so many tools that are helping to actually streamline our uh, project management as NGOs, tools like Trello. I use Asana a lot. It helps to actually um, plan your projects, execute them, even monitor your projects efficiently. We also have Monday.com. So all these um, platforms or tools can actually help you to facilitate even real-time collaboration tax delegation, and even progress tracking of your um, projects. And um, the tip I'll give on that would be how to, uh, using these tools to assign tax deadlines and communicate with team members and ensuring transparency and accountability. And then um, monitoring and evaluation as well. So we can also use these um, online platforms to actually collect data and analyze um, some of these, some of these data uh, using some of the tools like um, Kobo Toolbox. I use it as well, and I'm sure Sofina, you mentioned it some time back. Yes. So and then Survey Monkeys. We also have Google Forms. I use Google Forms to track some of um, um, the products we give out to pick up some um, to monitor even during our health education for these young girls. These are some of the we use Google Forms to track some of the, uh, the, to monitor and then evaluate uh, some of our, the projects we do. So, um, of course, health, even there was this success story of health organ, uh, health focus NGO that used this mobile survey to collect real time data on community health outcomes and was able to allow them to quickly adjust uh, uh, their interventions based on the real time data they were able to collect using this some of these tools. Yes, and then my next point will be communication and collaboration using these online communication tools like Slack. We have Zoom, which is helping to, I mean, of course, bring us all together for even this meeting as well. We have Microsoft Teams to foster better communication and collaboration among team members and even volunteers, stakeholders, regardless of your location. And a classical example of this uh, is this um, uh, um, uh, uh, session, which has been able to bring all of us across Africa, East Africa, West Africa, everybody together, just because of what some of these on uh, initially this is this was not possible, but NGOs should uh, I mean make a lot of effort to be able to make use of this because the world is actually moving fast in terms of technology. And the more we become acquainted with these ones, we are able to actually um, um, prepare ourselves to the, to the pace that the technology is moving. If you are unable to even move, uh, like move along, it means we are going to, I mean, I mean, lag behind. 
Yes, so um, basically, these are some of the areas we can be able to ensure we use these online uh, applications to um, for our sustainability as an organization, as an as NGOs. So my last point would be some of the challenges and considerations we should consider uh, during these uh, using these online applications and platforms. They offer a lot of benefits, as I've stated, but we have to consider a lot of uh, some very key challenges that have come out um, out of the use of these online applications and technology. Uh, one is, um, um, I would say, data security, privacy, and yeah, digital literacy. So ensuring that um, data protection is, um, is well managed, we should be able to train our staff to how to use these technologies effectively. And I mean, yeah, so basically in the transition of uh, into the online space and other things. So uh, training our staff is very important as well so that we can be able to um, manage the uh, security and cyber crime and other things that come along with exposing ourselves to um, online applications and platforms. So um, basically, yes, I would say um, embracing online application is, uh, is not an option. <laughs> it's actually a necessity for all NGOs aiming to thrive and uh, create sustainability in this modern world. And um, of course, um, if AI would not take your job, but the person using AI would definitely take your job if you don't avail yourself to some of these online applications and technologies that are up. Thank you so much.